Well, good morning, Jet Nation. It's good to see you. Today, I'd like to bring up a potentially polarizing topic, and let's talk about the case for Adam Gase. All right, Jet Nation, before we get into the business of this video, I had a question for you. Now, I just purchased two new Jets hats. One will be given to my 12-year-old son, and one I'm gonna keep for myself. So let's start, and I'm gonna actually uh, see what you guys think, and that may, you know, that may help me to make my decision. The truth is, I like them both, but uh, I just don't know. So let's start with this one. Now it's uh, it's a fitted cap, so it would need not not fitted, but it's a one size fits all, so I would have to uh, stretch it out a little bit. It's a touch small, but what do you guys think of this hat? So this is. Uh, Choice number one. So remember, my 12-year-old son's gonna get one and I'm gonna keep one. Or we have this one right here with the new logo and all that kind of stuff, nice and nice and pure. Um, I know which way I'm leaning if I'm being really honest, but I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say. Let me know, hat one or hat two, okay? Thank you. So for this video, let's just do this. Let's do this. Aha! Okay, so here we go with the little hair wings because I haven't had a haircut in three months. Okay, so now we have a coach. A coach I didn't want, quite frankly. We have a coach named Adam Gase. Uh, I was rooting for Mike McCarthy. My very, very close second was Matt Rule. Uh, and I mean, even Munkin and some other guys I had before uh, Adam Gase, but he's our coach nonetheless. And so a lot of us like to point out uh, his middle of the pack to later of the pack offenses um, when he didn't have Pey Peyton Manning and all those kinds of things. And we see some decisions made on the field that we don't really know what the hell he's thinking. So I wanted to take a moment and just point out a few things why Gase might actually be the right man for the job. Now that's not to say I actually you know, I'm all the way on that side of things, but I'd just like to bring up some points to kind of counterbalance the argument a little bit. So, number one, uh, Peyton Manning, who is, our, you know, obviously one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Peyton Manning didn't just say in, a, in an interview, yeah, I like Adam Gase. Peyton Manning went as far as to actually call p people and let them know, hey, you gotta really consider this guy. He's rough around the edges. He might not seem like the right guy outward looking in, but I'm telling you, I know the guy intimately. I know his brain. I know his motivations. I know his thinking and his abilities. You want to hire this guy. Why would Peyton Manning do that outside of something, you know, having, <laughs> you know, having dirt on Peyton Manning? The truth is, is that he went out of his way to lobby for this guy. So why would he do that now I know we've talked about that it's kind of it is what it is but that's just the first one I want to really consider that when we're moving uh, further into these these little examples here so Peyton Manning believes in this guy wholeheartedly to the degree he puts his own reputation on the line to actually call places and let them know what he thinks about him and lobby for him so that's number one number two if you remember last year in the preseason uh, we kept Avery Williamson in the game uh, the preseason game into the late third quarter where he uh, tore his ACL and we lost him for the season and everybody was freaking out. Uh, what did the Jets, you know, what were they thinking, blah, 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 blah. We know damn well that Adam Gase is the coach of the offense and the head coach, but he's taking care of the offense and Greg Williams is the head coach of the defense. We know that. But when that happened, when that decision took place and it blew up in our face and Avery Williamson went down for the year, what did Adam Gase do? He stepped up forward and he said, no, 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 that was not Greg Williams' decision. That was my decision. I wanted to keep Avery Williamson in uh, to see, you know, how he could handle CJ Mosley's responsibilities and, and stuff like that. It, does anyone really believe that that was not Greg Williams' decision? Why would all of a sudden Adam Gase dip into the defensive side of the ball and just to make one decision, keep Avery Williamson in there? That's horse crap. We know it is. Everybody knows it is. But he, took, he jumped out in front of Greg Williams, took the bullet, and dealt with all of the ramifications, the repercussions, all of the, the mud slinging that, that came our way, landed squarely on Adam Gase, and he never said, uh, he never hinted for one second anything other than that was 100 percent his decision and i don't believe for a second that it was so that shows that he's willing to uh take bullets for his for his his uh his troops let's call them okay um 
uh, well, that's actually I'm on number three. I, I lose count. I lose count within the the number three. That's how that's how bad it's getting. Uh, so item number three, example number three, when um, when Sam so Sam Darnold went down with mono, okay, and he came back in, and everybody was wondering why we're not doing RPOs, why why does our offense look so stagnant and all this kind of stuff. He never said for one second, well, guys, look, I have a sick quarterback. Wah, wah, wah. He never cried. He never said anything. He just took the mud on his face and just ran the offense that he needed to to do what? To protect Sam Darnold. Yes, we knew about the, the little flak jacket that Sam Darnold had to wear, but we never heard one word about the limitations about, you know, Sam Darnold and being sick and his spleen and all those kinds of things. We didn't hear one excuse. We didn't hear one complaint from Adam Gates. He just went out there and accepted that people were ripping his offense, ripping his decisions, and he just stood by his decisions, and he and he just acted like that was the best he could do, and uh, he never said, well, hey, I'm trying to protect Sam or any of this sort of stuff, and you know damn well if you look at it, if you look at it a little bit deeper, uh, Adam Gase had to make decisions with Sam Darnold. Uh, at the center of it all. He had to make decisions where he was going to protect Sam. He had to limit the offense. Look at our offensive line. He tried really hard to just make simple plays and, and all that kind of stuff. He had to respond to what he had available. Not you know The main thing being Sam Darnold being very, very sick, guys. Nobody comes back from mono in, uh, in four weeks. Sam Darnold did that, so Adam Gase had to change the whole offense to protect Sam Darnold, but the, the really the key that I'm trying to, the key key point I'm trying to make is that he never complained about it. He just took it. He didn't say he had to adjust the offense. He didn't do any of that stuff. He just did it and he took all the shit right on the face um, as if that was just what he was doing. But we know if you look deeper into it, that's why he was doing it. He didn't complain. He just did it to protect his guy. So example number four, I was hoping to get to five, but I think I only have four. It's hard to find things to, to uh, support this guy. <laughs> hey, look at these wings. I feel like the, uh, what was that, the nun? nun? What was that, the nun, the flying nun? That's what I feel like right now, the flying jet nun. So example number four is this. During the Cleveland game, Jamal Adams at the very end of the game was losing his mind. He, was get, he got two penalties in a row and all that kind of stuff. Greg Williams benched him. Okay, Greg Williams benched Jamal Adams. Does that not seem like something Greg Williams would do? Of course he would do it. It's his freaking defense. But when everybody complained about it, when Jamal was crying uh, to the media and all that sort of stuff, what did Gase do? He said it was his decision. He made light of it. No, I just felt like Jamal needed to cool off, and I told him to, I told Greg to bench him. That's baloney. It's the same kind of thing as, as Avery Williamson. It's baloney, man. But the good thing, and all these things really paint a picture about one real example, which is Adam Gase is out front taking all the bullets for the team. He doesn't complain. He doesn't pass the buck. And his team, the, you know, evidenced by the 6-2 and two finish, they are responding to that. His coaches love him. He didn't fire his offensive line coach just to have, you know, to, to throw somebody under the bus. Um, you know, at the end of last year, everybody was calling for blood. He didn't do that he, he he's keeping his his coaching staff together because he believes that they need more time which they do firing but i mean how many aren't we sick of firing guys every friggin year fire the offensive coordinator fire the offensive line coach fire this fire 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 isn't that aren't, aren't we done with this let's see we know pollock is a good coach he's he's been around man he's done it he's built some of the best offensive lines uh in recent memory especially down in Dallas. So this guy can do the job. We know he can do the job. Stick with the team. And that's what Adam Gase is doing. He's taken all the, the hits from the media. He's taken all the crap from fans. And he's just standing out front and he's weathering all of it. Now, is he handling it perfectly the way he responds, you know, to certain? Maybe not. But the good thing about this guy, and his, this is the kind of stuff that people actually look for in following somebody as their leader. He's out front weathering every problem for everybody behind him. He's the general. He's out front. He's a head coach. So these are some things, man. I have to say, when I look at the character makeup of somebody that's going to do something like that, I'd have to say that's a very, very strong positive, especially for a a head coach, not an offensive coordinator, not a defensive coordinator, a head coach. That's the kind of thing that, that, head, that head coaches 
have to do, and he didn't chop the head off of anybody his, you know, on his staff when the season didn't go exactly like we wanted it to. He's building with his team, and he, like I said, weathered all the onslaught from the press, the media, the fans, and everything. And uh, I think there was even a banner last year, Fire Gase or something like that. Again, we, and I mean, look at us. We're, you know, we're not the easiest fan base in the world. So those are the positive. That's the case for Gase. Now his offensive prowess aside, I don't know. Let's let him get some of his players, guys that he actually wants, and let's see what he does with them. Um, let's give him a year at least to actually get some guys in here that he wanted, not Mike McCagan's uh, riffraff. A uh, you know, hodgepodge collection of misfits. Let's see what he can do with guys that he wants. But the character makeup, I think, if we look at these examples, is strong. And I think that we should maybe consider weighing that against some of the complaints that we have. Again, I'm not necessarily all the way on that side. I'm just devil's advocate trying to present the opposite argument uh, to what we've all been hearing. And it's something to consider. So what do you think? What do you think? You think my case for Gase is all that strong? I'm going to make one uh, next with about Dowell or Dowell Loggins. Let's see how good that video is. I'm just going to go right in and do it. I don't know if it'll be as strong. <laughs> as strong. I don't know if I have as many examples. But anyway, let me know what you think. Comment in the comments section below. Follow us on YouTube. You know, Give us a subscribe um, and hit the bell so you know exactly when our videos are coming out. And let's, uh, let's try to get through this offseason together. Um, go Jets.